Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com Okay, we finished the uh, question view controller. I think we can move on to the result view controller. Yes. Let's create a new test file. Let's call it. And let's have our first test. If you remember our prototype, we had a header label. That right. was the summary. Yep. Let's start with that. So we can say when the view, so when view did load, render summary. Here we want to assert that the SUT summary label text is going to be an optional. We could call it header label to follow the other pattern as okay. well. Okay. It's going to be a summary. It's not optional. Okay, so when we load and we can create our CT and I can call it summary. Of course, this now does not build, so we can create our view controller. And I'm inheriting from UI view controller. So, as we did before, I'm going to start with a convenience initializer and just pass the summary, which is just a string, self init, and I want to capture this summary, so I can self summary equals summary, and of course I don't have this summary yet. Make it private bar. I can just give it a default value, right? Yes. And now I can say view did load, and I need a label here, so header label dot text equals my summary. Yes. But I don't have the label. I think we can use interface builder like we did before. Exactly. Call results view controller create. And we want to set it as our file owner. And then we want to link our view. Okay, so we're gonna need a label. Again, we don't care about how it looks and the layout. We just need to grab a reference to a label. Control drag, I'm gonna call it header label. I think now it's internal, it's not public, so I will need to import quiz up. That should do it. I think you rush a little bit and we don't see a failing test. You're right. Okay, so yes. If it fails and then it passes, it means that we are covered. Okay. And next, we need to get some answers. Exactly. In the prototype, we had a table view showing the correct and wrong answers. I think we can replicate that here also. Okay. Calling this func test when the view loads. If we don't have answers, it does not render answers. And now I can assert that the table view is going to have a number of rows and section things like this section yes it is equal to zero. First of all answers answers not options we need to specify that the answers are empty so i'm just gonna comment out this here for now add my answers that's an array of strings okay for now we'll see we'll see what's how this is gonna play out so now Okay, run the test. Okay, so this passes, it means we are okay. Now I can uncomment this test. And now my problem is that I don't have a table view. Yes. I can just quickly drop one in here and just control drag over there in my view controller. Yes. That's what I want. Back to the test. So now this should be fine. Right, so now we're gonna need the data source. I can say with just one answer. Renders answer. I'm just gonna call that A1 for now. Okay, I want the number of rows in section to be one. Yeah. Now I'm gonna get a filling test, I think. So we're going to need the data source and we need to hook up the data source from table view to our view controller. So we can do this in the in the nib. Okay. 
and my number of rows in section are going to be, well, I want it to be my answers.count. It's an empty. Let's initialize it. That's it. Oh, we need to implement uh, another method. Yes, self is required. Self for all. And we just return an empty cell. Okay. I think we should think about this answer now because our answer is not going to be a string. We need to know if the answer is correct or not. There's more complicated data to show in each cell. Mm -hmm. We should start thinking about a model. And I don't want this test breaking all the time. We can have a make SUT method like we had before. We can also have a make dummy answer. Okay. Let's refactor the SUT first of all. Yes. The summary, it has a default value because sometimes you don't care about it. And the same for the answers. Okay. It's a string, right? An array of strings, sorry. And it's going to return my result view controller. So a little factory method here. With summary and our answers. Yes. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's put the view load. And I can return my SUT. And I think you have an extra space. You are correct, sir. So now I can replace. Yeah, result. it can get rid of the answers because we don't care about answers in this test. That's gone. And I can make it a one liner. Same thing here. And we don't care about the summary in this test. Let's run our test so far. Okay, and it could be a one-liner. With one answer, again, we don't care about the summary here. And this can be make SUT. Now we can, now this is obsolete. We can move it in the same test. Yeah, but we need to rename. Renders answers. Yes. Okay. Okay, another thing I don't like is that we have to hard code a string in there in the test and we know it's not going to be a string. So we should have a method that creates this type. So when it's time to have a type, we just replace that method and we don't break the test. Okay, we can say make dummy answer. Yeah, and it returns, so far it's a string, so it returns. Say an answer. Okay. Yes. Test. Okay, so now we can carry on and we don't need to be concerned about the type of the answer yet. Mm -hmm. So I think the next test should be... So wait, first of all, we had two different kinds of cells. Mm -hmm. So I think we can start there. So we want something like this. Okay. When the view loads, with correct answer? Right. It, it's going to render the correct cell. Yes. Correct cell? Correct answer cell. Correct answer cell, OK. We can say that it's not nil. As the first test we can have is to test that the cell is not nil. Now we need to get the cell. We pass the SCT dot table view in so for our odds index path. And this is gonna give us a cell back. But we want to cast that, right? And we're gonna need some type there. Let's call the correct answer cell. I need an index path. And I need my SUT. I don't need the summary. I can see. For the answers I can say make dummy answer. Well, but a dummy answer is not a correct answer. We don't know what a dummy answer is. Mm -hmm. I think we went too far. Now it's time to think about this model. Okay. Right. So far, the model needs to have knowledge about if it's right or wrong. Yes. It's just data in my head. Yeah. A struct. Yep. This is an answer. Let's see. And, and it has a boolean. Let's say is it's correct. Correct. Yeah. Can we call that presentable answer? Because that's what it is. Yes. Sentable. Right. I expect this to be in a presentation layer. It doesn't know anything about UI kit. This presentable answer can be presented in a watch, in the TV OS, in a Mac OS application. Right. And now I also need a correct answer. So 
And this is just a UIW so far now. So far, yes. And we need to give this type presentable answer to our answers array. True. Let me first comment out this test. So now I can replace my string with a presentable answer. Yes. And that should do it here. Uh, and you should change the type in make dummy answer. Make dummy answer. It doesn't matter if true or false, but it's just dummy. Yeah. yeah. So if I run now, we should be green. And we are. Okay. So let's create a presentable answer and make it true because we want to present the correct answer. So and we have a failing test. Okay. I can just return a correct answer. So yes. Okay. So you see how thinking about the test first, it helped us know when it's time to create our modules step by step. And now we can probably have the other case if it's wrong. When the view loads, wrong answer, he renders wrong answer cell. Now this is false here. Yeah. And then we want wrong answer cell. Let's create this so we can silence the compiler. Should fail. It should fail. And it does. Nice. Now make it pass. So the minimum is to check here if the answer is correct or not. We can say if it's correct, then we want to return a correct answer. So, and if it's not, then we want to return a wrong answer. So, okay. So we need some refactoring there. I think now we can use the methods helper. we had for the other tests. Yeah. Yes. It's time to move it to so, internal scope rather than private. Yeah, let's do it right now. It's going to take a minute. Okay. Probably. So we can create a file, test helpers, w helpers. And we make sure it's on the correct target. We don't want this in production. Exactly. Okay. Remove the private. Yes. So now in the results, View controller. We can just use cell at table view cell at zero. And that cleans up a lot. We can use this here also. And we don't need the Okay, let's run the test and I think that's enough for this tomato. Okay. Let's reflect. I really like that we pushed the creation of the model as long as we could, because now I think we have a better understanding of how this thing is gonna look like. And what I like about our design there is that we decided just to go with is correct and that's all we need at this point. I mean, I can see how it can change, but that's what we need. Yeah, that's it's very what we simple. Uh, it's all the view controller needs to render itself. Okay, on to the next one.